All right, a third question. What is your plan for the economic growth of your city? And again, begin with Shannon Hills and Mike Kim. Well, we're already planning. We're not uh, waiting for the election to be over with, I can tell you that. Uh, uh, and that was one of the big problems whenever I came into office four years ago. There wasn't much planning. Since I've come into office, we brought in $1.3 million, actually more than $1.3 million worth of grants. That's more than all the prior mayors in the history of the town. Uh, we are getting ready now to pave 18 streets. Uh, it's the largest uh, road improvement project ever in the history of the city of Shannon Hills. Uh, we just opened the bids uh, last week on phase two of our new park. That park was built during my first term here as mayor of Shannon Hills. And we're also going to open bids Monday on Shannon Hills' first jogging track. We're soon going to be starting construction on a sidewalk along County Line Road so that more of our children can walk or ride their bikes to school. Uh, we're also in the process of preparing to build our third fire station. It'll be the largest one ever in our, in our city. We're the seventh fastest growing town in the uh, state of Arkansas. And we've got to be ready for what's coming. Thank you, and uh, Mr. Russell from Boxside. <laughs> one of the things that's so important for, for Boxside, when we see Benton on one side and Brian on the other, and both of them are growing, one of the difficulties of Boxside is that Alcoa owns a, a lot of that land. And uh, so we're going to uh, improve the, basically the knowledge of, of all the the, the land that we got, who owns it, how we can acquire it, how can we bring people in. So one of the, one of the first things that I would do is, is begin to search out businesses that might be willing to move to Boxside. It will help with a, uh, our tax, our revenue uh, situation in, in Boxside. But growth is so very, very important. Uh, we as a, as a city needs, need to be uh, in a mode of, of growth, wanting to grow. We just can't sit back and just wait for uh, anything to, just to happen because I think that if we don't uh, have a vision for growth for our city, we'll become stagnant. And, uh, and that's not good for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you. All right, Brian, we'll begin with Jill Dabbs. Economic development is, real, is very important to our city because that's what sustains our tax base that we operate our city, that we pay for our streets and our public safety and our parks with. One of the things that we can really do, and we're starting to do this more throughout our county, is collaboration with SCDC, the Saline County Economic Development Committee. They have, put in, they have put in place a plan in Vision 2020, and there's mayors across the county that are, some of them are here tonight, that are embracing that and working alongside with them and the Chambers of Commerce for economic development. Another thing that we can do at the local level that's very important, and we have started this in Bryant, is building better streets, building streets to drive economic development to our city. People are looking for places that have a great quality of life. They're going to pick where they live, and then they're going to start their businesses and raise their families. And we have a blank canvas in Bryant um, in a lot of ways, and we can learn from what other cities have done as a growing city. Uh, we're going to be to continue to lay down new streets, and uh, this economic development needs to be the driving force behind that every single time in regards to how those streets are built, where they're put in, and how that connectivity is, is achieved. Thank you. Mr. Henley? Economic development here in Bryan has went really well in the past 10 years. We've doubled almost in population. We've done really well. I think we've got to continue that by doing the connector streets. We have to look at our parks, make sure that they're kept up to date because people move here with their children. We've got a great school system, and the people I talk to tell me it, that's what drives them to come to Bryant. Um, a lot of them work out of town, so we've got to be able to get them in and out of town efficiently and make it a place that they want to be and they want to live and be a hometown. Thanks. Thank you. And Mr. Cox. As I stated earlier, uh, I will bring a comprehensive business plan to the city and to the council. Part of that comprehensive business plan will be working with the Chamber of Commerce, the current businesses, and the school system, as well as look at the freight that's going up and down our interstate system every day right through Bryant, and find out what freight they're hauling, where they're hauling it from, where they're hauling it to, and start visiting with those customers and see what their plans are for the future and let them know about this great city and the hidden diamonds in the areas that we have in our city and how we can bring their business to our city 
to further our growth, to further our funding, to be able to keep up with our rapid growth. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll move to Haskell. And we'll begin with Jamie watson Bruton. Haskell is a small city, but it's definitely growing. Um, I want to make sure that it, it continues to progress and continues to grow economically. And one of the ways to do that is, is by keeping our streets um, up to date, keeping every, all of our parks, everything we have up to date to entice people to move out there. Our school system is one of the best that you can have around here. And people move out there just to take their kids to school out there. So the neighborhoods are popping up. You know, the population is going up. We have our own grocery store and own Fred's out there now. So I hope that we can get some more small businesses and, and you know, small, small town businesses are what drives those communities. Their taxes come into our, our system and we get to use those to go back and invest in the community and further the development of it and, the, and, the, and just keep on, to keep on with the growth and the progression of our city. We've got to have those people in there with those businesses. Thank you. And uh, Jane Lyman. Because of the half cent sales tax is dedicated to the roads, as mayor, I will make a separate line on our budget to ensure that all the funds that we receive from that money will go to the streets of the city of Haskell. I would also like to have uh, pocket parks, green areas throughout the community doesn't have to be large, a beautification program, somewhere you could sit and, and rest or just sit. Uh, we have a lot of potential in Haskell. We would welcome any business that will come, will come there. I also feel like that we need a stronger code enforcement policy to ensure that people will want to come to to Haskell and live there in, in that neighborhood. We also need uh, a stronger animal control. Uh, we don't currently have a full-time animal control person. All right, thank you. 